Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a problem suggested by one of my viewers. Thank you, user LU6YG3VK9Z for this problem and the hint. So we're going to be solving this equation. Let's go ahead and take a look. We have x squared plus x squared divided by x plus 1 squared equals 3. Now, let's go ahead and look at it from two different perspectives. First method. For my first method, I'm going to make a common denominator. And x squared can be divided by as can be written as x squared over 1. So the common denominator is going to be x plus 1 squared. Let's multiply x squared by that. And then add the other numerator. And then divide it by the common denominator. So what we're going to do is we're going to simplify the numerator and the denominator. And then cross multiply. x squared will be multiplied by x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then we're going to add x squared. And at the bottom, we're just going to have x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now, let's go ahead and simplify the numerator. x to the fourth power plus 2x cubed plus x squared and then another x squared. So it's going to give us 2x squared. And then if you cross multiply these two, you're going to get 3x squared plus 6x plus 3. Now, since we have x to the fourth on the left hand side, let's put everything on that side. So we're going to get x to the fourth power plus 2x to the third power. And then plus 2x squared minus 3x squared is going to give us negative x squared minus 6x minus 3 equals 0. Awesome. Well, not so awesome because you got a quartic equation. And hopefully we're going to get four solutions from you. But good luck solving the quartic with the quartic formula. The quartic formula is quite complicated. It's way too big and we don't even have a formula for the quintic we do have the quadratic cubic and quartic but the quartic formula is very very long and very complex so what do we do if you can find a rational solution like one or three or negative one or negative three in this case then you'll be lucky and you can reduce the power but that's going to give you a cubic so you still have to use either rational root theorem again or um, try the cubic formula. It's much easier than the quartic, you know, relatively, uh, obviously. But anyways, so you end up with a quartic equation like this. That's kind of like incomplete, but the end of the first method. <laughs> so the first method didn't really give us anything nice. Let's take a look at the second method. That's why this is called the first method most of the time because it's usually either too long or too brute forcey or inconclusive like this one. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. With the second method, we're going to use something much more technical and also more elegant. All right, when you look at this problem, hopefully you noticed that there's something special about it. And that is both the numerator and the denominator, denominator are squared right so that means we can kind of write it as a quotient squared makes sense okay anyways let me clarify what i mean second method so we have x squared plus x squared over x plus one squared equals three now at this point i know some people are going to try to guess their uh, solution but it's not always easy. Like you can try uh, some integers or rationals, but I don't think you're going to find one. I could be wrong. Let's find out. So first of all, I'm going to write the second term as x over x plus 1 squared. Now there's something really nice about it. It basically allows me to use a really cool effective method. And that is called substitution. You know, it's one of my favorite methods. And it's very, very powerful. Let's go ahead and see how that works. So since I have something inside the parentheses, let's call that y. You're like, why are you calling that y? Because I chose y as my variable. 
And this gives us a simplified version of this equation. x squared plus y squared equals 3. Cool, but you just introduced another variable. Yes, but that variable is related to x. It's not a standalone. So now we're going to simplify this one. x over x plus 1 equals y. So from here, I'm able to write x in terms of y or y in terms of x or some type of relationship between x and y. Let's see how we can use it to our advantage. So I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply x equals xy plus y. And then my goal from here is either to solve for x or to get something nice. And I'm going to go with the second, the latter, which is subtracting y from both sides and getting x minus y equals xy. Now you might be questioning like, what is so good about this, right? It doesn't give you y by itself or x by itself. Now here's the thing. If you isolate x and plug it in here, you're not going to get anything nice because it's just going to give you another equation that could be turned into a quartic. As we know with the first method, that's not very helpful, right? So instead, we're going to do something else. Notice that we are basically faced with two expressions, x minus y and xy. One of them is a difference, the other one is a product. And guess what? They're equal. And if you look at this expression, that expression actually contains these two terms. How? So we can write this as x minus y squared, which is x squared minus 2xy plus y squared plus 2xy, because that 2xy is going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with sum of two squares. Make sense? Great. Now, what did we get? We got the same two expressions. Let's go ahead and box them so we can see what they look like. This is x minus y, and this is xy. This is x minus y, and this is xy. What does that mean? It means one word that starts with s. If you said substitution, you write. So now, here's what we're going to do. Let's call this d for difference, and let's call this p for product. So now we got the following. d squared plus 2p. Okay, I'm not going to say 2b or not 2b. You know what I'm talking about. Equals 3. And d equals p. Look at that. Isn't that powerful? It is. So now we can replace d with p, and that's going to give us p squared plus Okay, you know what I mean. 2p equals 3. And from here we get two solutions. p equals 1 and p equals negative 3. And since d and p are equal, if p is equal to 1, then d is equal to 1. If p is equal to negative 3, then d is equal to negative 3. This is not the end of it because we still have to find x and y from here. But that's going to be fairly easy. p is the product, so xy equals 1. And we get x minus y equals 1. So here's what I can do. I can basically replace x with y plus 1 or y with x minus 1. Let's go ahead and do the second. y equals x minus 1. Let's go ahead and plug it in here. y equals x minus 1. So x, mi x times x minus 1 equals 1. x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. And yes, the golden ratio, right? x equals negative b plus minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Yes, one of them gives you the golden ratio. Beautiful. A golden result. What about the other equation? P equals negative 3 and D equals negative 3. So P is the product, remember? XY is negative 3 and X minus Y is negative 3. Again, let's go ahead and write this as a quadratic equation. If you isolate Y, you get Y equals X plus 3 from the second equation. And go ahead and plug that in. X times X plus 3 equals negative 3. Is this going to work? Let's find out. X squared plus 3X equals negative 3, but if you add the 3 to both sides, you're going to get the following. And from here, you're using the negative, um, what is negative? <laughs> the quadratic formula, negative b, plus minus the square root of b squared, 9 minus 4ac, which is 12, negative 3. Uh-oh, we got a complex solution. Non-real, right? And those solutions are going to be plus minus root 3, and so on and so forth. So we got this, and we got the other one, which is, which is, which is what? 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. Let's go ahead and put them together. 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. And we got four solutions as hinted.
And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.